Thank you for joining us for Holy Communion. Thank you, James. Um, for the distribution, if you have been having communion in your field and parish, you may be used to this, but um, after everything is blessed and consecrated, Cynthia and Hope will be distributing communion to you. So you can go ahead and stay seated. Um, when the priest approaches you, you can stand up, hold out your hands, and they will drop the wafer into your hand, um, bread only, and just wait until the priest is about six feet away before removing your mask and consuming. And we do have gluten-free available, so if you need that option, just indicate so um, to the priest, and we will get you what you need. The lamp to put it under a bucket, but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the good you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. And we implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and honored Jesus in the poor of this world. Grant that we, following her example, may with love and gladness serve those in any need or trouble, in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. 
Amen. We'll pray Psalm 112, verses 1 through 9 in unison. It's found on page 755. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it, to one of these, least of these, who are members of my family. You did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord.
Nathan Sermon from our last Eucharist on campus. Nathan preached about Lazarus and the rich man and reminded us that in God's economy, there is more than enough. That no one need go hungry. No one need be left starving in the street in the company of stray dogs. Maybe you're having a hard time remembering it because that sermon was preached in Christ Chapel and now we worship outside. So a very different space. We had already begun to adjust how we worship with the new realities of COVID. We had drained the baptismal font, which we do in Lent anyway, but we had special instruction from the diocese to do so. And the smell of hand sanitizer had started to fill the space. And we passed the peace with waves and bows and no handshakes. That sermon was preached on March 12th, so a really different time. And our community was a different group. Since that time, we've graduated a gifted class and sent them out into the world into their ministry. And we welcomed and incorporated the new class. And just today, we get to welcome baby Gordon into our community. <laughs> We're different people in some ways than we were the last time we were able to gather for this meal. And we've all adjusted to masks and to shutdowns and to virtual school and to Zoom committee meetings and to a whole set of vocabulary and behaviors that we could not have imagined when we were contemplating Lazarus and the rich man back then. And yet, Today's gospel reminds us that the abundance of God's grace has not changed. That we come to this table again today trusting that more than enough will be offered. The story of the sheep is a story that reminds us that however strange and varied our year has been, we still know how to follow the shepherd. We know that we are called to serve. And we know that those acts of service are fully within our grasps to give food, to give drink, to welcome, to give clothing, to care for the sick, to visit the imprisoned. We can practice our faith in these deeds even without the rituals of our traditions. And we have continued to do so all these long months. Even when we find ourselves in an unsteady and changing world, we can be and have proven to be people who will jump in when we see another in need. Our actions and our beliefs are woven together in the lives of the sheep. And the conditions of our lives don't change that truth. This passage comes in Matthew 25 after a string of parables. Jesus has already taught about the wise and foolish bridesmaids and about the invested talents that you heard on Sunday. And this story of the sheep, it's like the detailed instruction manual for how to stay awake how to keep your lamp filled, how to get a return on those talents that you've been trusted with. The sheep know what to do while waiting for the shepherd, the bridegroom, the master. The oil is food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, clothing for those who need it. The talents have been invested in the sick and the in the imprisoned, in the least of these little ones. While we wait through the in-between times, whether they be March to November of 2020, or the time between the ascension and his return, we are to follow the example of Jesus. 
the one that he set at the beginning of Matthew's gospel, to care for the least and the neediest. This Jesus in Matthew's gospel who fed the hungry on the hillside, who kept company with the loneliest sinners, who made sure the sick were well. The sheep know what to do even in the shepherd's absence because he showed them by doing it. They may not have fully understood the why or the who of their service, but they know how to serve because their shepherd is a servant. Matthew's gospel gives us a double exposure photograph, one commentary said, with the last day and the present day as the same image. Jesus' earliest ministry and his last teaching paint one picture. Judgment is happening all the time. Righteousness is happening all the time. And Jesus is with us all the time. And like the sheep, we get to come to the table tonight at the shepherd's invitation to taste the banquet that is at once our past, our present, and our future. Tonight, with the sheep, we get to taste, for some of us, for the first time since March, for some of us, for the first time in this community. We get to taste a little piece of that inheritance prepared for us from the foundation of the world. And we will leave here tonight with the same commitments we had in March, to make God's abundance clear to the world, to leave no Lazarus in the streets, do as the sheep do, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit the imprisoned. Jesus is with us all the time, and we know how to follow him through any time or place. Amen. Amen. Our prayers of the people are according to Form 6 on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this seminary. We pray for all who study in this community, especially Leslie and me, especially John. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the life of Cecia Gordon. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be put be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. In your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now sing.
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this night and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us... Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah.